Sorry about all the delays. Uh, welcome to Teachers TV Teachers. It's August 9th, and um, hopefully Terry Elliott will join us too. But uh, quick go around and just uh, check in with how you're feeling, what you're thinking. Um, who wants to start us? Charlene, why don't you start us off? How am I feeling and what am I thinking? Well, um, I'm I'm feeling okay. I'm feeling confused as well. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Cool. I'm excited hey. to be here. Great. Welcome. Peggy, are you there? She, I see her chair. Okay. <laughs> Bob, you're up. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm um, trying to figure out how to do a interactive learning experience with colleagues around using AI as a learning learning design or thinking partner. Um, and so I'm just looking for ideas. And I might use more comment. I might use more space. But the, the, the hope is that I can not host a conversation about the hype or the issues or the kind of debate around AI, rather an event in which people are, are, are adults, you know, these are learning experience designers, uh, can experience AI. So it's kind of a maker space. Uh, and Paul, you are the best model I know in terms of providing those kind of maker spaces for us. So I'm going to uh, right. Hope to learn, learn from right. everyone on how to how to do this. And David, yeah, um, I guess what I can say I've been doing in the past week or so is uh, I thought I got myself onto the Schmidt Futures Learning Agency Google Group. It's titled Learning Engineering. There's a big Google group, and people ping things in there. And uh, I asked a question in a thread which was about conversational data sets. This is a conversation I've had with Paul and others about how do you prompt and how do you listen to, how do you, how do you support and listen to the user or learner? And how can you approximate the voice of a writing coach? Meaning how can you nudge and encourage and not answer? And so I, I asked a question along those lines, inquiring about data sets and I got a really interesting response from a number of folks. One person was a learning uh, a guy with a group called Corwin Press down in Australia. And to make a long story short, he was noting things about motivation and mastery and surface deep and then transfer learning as being the rhetoric you can use to move through a staging activity. And um, an inter a very interesting conversation about how you would go about designing a conversational set of prompts that might be used to give the bot the information it needs to guide its feedback. Trying to think of a tutor bot as able to sort of listen and encourage and not simply sort of be there as this fact checker or text improver. Mm -hmm. So that's been interesting. It's opening, a, it's a, it's opening a big door into motivation and mastery and psychology as well as computational mm -hmm. and linguistics, which is to say I'm way, I'm way over my head, but that's what I'm trying to absorb. <laughs> way over our heads. Yeah, good. No, no. <laughs> well, you're great to listen. I so appreciate it. No, no, I appreciate it. It's it's just, it's just like as the gaps grow, it, worry, it begins to worry me. You know, it's like, yeah, yeah, the gaps are yeah. growing. I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In my Hi, Peggy. Hi there. <laughs> okay. Just I I just threw open this space. So thank you. If you had difficulty getting here, welcome, welcome. Terry, are you there? I am here. Okay, great. All right. Listen. Um, so I had this. Um, I, I don't. I don't know if I believe in vivid, vivid dreams or not. But I. I, <laughs> I, I had this. I had this um, notion while I was sleeping, that that we could turn some of the work we've done to give people um, experiences in AI, and then look back at some of many other kinds of um, let's call them invitations. We've called them playlists, different kinds of things. Um, how could we create an ex a quick experience for, for teachers and youth to play with and use um, AI in a very kind of makerspace kind of way? Um, and so, you know, I wrote that down and <laughs> really fast. I went back to sleep. 
but um so so that's what i'm i'm kind of uh in, in that way proposing to you to think through with me by doing one make um but how about a quick reaction to that idea it, it, it sounds a lot like what i just what i shared paul i think i know you and I, yeah I, I think because our conversations have happened a couple times outside of this. I think we're merging somehow into the same uh, brain. But I love that idea, and and I and I also love David's um, sharing around the persona of the bot because I David tried out the Shraft AI and I got yeah. really frustrated with the yeah. attitude that the yeah. AI was showing me. It was very condescending and. Yeah, and I was, and I, I was infantilized, and I was like, I, I am really upset, and I don't like this. So I, I think, you know, creating yeah. experiences and figuring this out would be really great. Yeah, just to pick up on what you're saying, Bob, I think a number of the of the engagement strategies that are surfacing that are really interesting. I mean, Paul, I don't know, Paul, would you invent learning partners for? Now comments, exploration of AI, was that sort of your term or did that sort of come I, Yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's yeah. a term that's used in educational fields. I, I just adopted yeah, yeah. it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course. But I mean, the idea that you can, you can I mean, it's, it's not a new idea, but the, the Shraft idea, the, 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 the situational presentation that you're going to talk to and, and, and be, you're going to be the, be the expert, I think is a really, it's, it's, a well, it's a well-trodden path in terms of inviting student voice and giving sort of student leadership moments and but the ai needs to be tuned you know and yeah. the, you know you look at the folks on this call for example you can imagine what if we all could sort of have a mind meld and sort of infuse some conversational guidance for a for a bot i bet that bot would be quite it would be it would be very uh, very well trusted and really useful so yeah i'm down with that idea i think it would be really useful to figure out how to situate a bot in these different contexts that I think would be really fruitful provided it has the right um, tone and attitude in terms of how to support process learning. Yeah. Yeah. Was little... Apparently you turned your mic off and on a couple of times. Did you have one? Oh, you want uh, to... I'm just going to echo what the others have said. Um, I, you know, makes are a wonderful way of getting creative um, thought going and collaboration going as well, because we all have different, things to bring to the table. One question about the term make, you know, because I spend mm. a lot of time in maker spaces and I think when you said makerspaces, Paul, I mean if I'm sort of turning I know. I I'm I'm almost embarrassed in front of you to use this. No, 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 no. It's it's good. I mean, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's interesting yeah. that, that that verb or noun mm. or whatever kind of word it wants to be um, mm. has sort of propagated into the mm. idiot into, into the lexicon, right? So to to follow your thread here, if this is a maker space, right? I, I go to the soldering station, I go to the sewing station, I go to the, the laser cutting, whatever. I mean, you're basically, I think what you're describing is some sandboxes within the sandbox where different types of explorations can happen and different tools or prompt sets or features are sort of surfaced. So is that what you're meaning? I'm trying to sort of understand. Yeah, the, yeah. The and, and, let me, and, and let me admit or start by saying that we're, we're kind of using assignments first, right? I mean, sure. I, but but your vision of the of the different location, yeah. So I, I'm trying to say, let's let's move toward that if we can. Um, but also, what I I just got an email. I somebody said was complaining that on now comment not not complaining. She just said that on now comment you can't turn off the reply with AI. Uh, you can turn off the other AI. But anyway, um, so I. You never know as the platform guy, right? If you can talk to somebody. But I, I, I did ask her, well, yeah, we'll get that fixed, but tell me why. And I just wanted to read what she wrote. And it's, it's, um, she says, uh, I'm, a, I'm a high school English teacher and I'm thinking of using now comment in my classroom. Students have to know how to think critically for themselves and respond in writing on their own before they can start using AI. AI is a tool that they can learn to use in addition to their competency in thinking and writing, not as a substitute for it. Yeah. You know, so, like, how do we talk to? That's a reasonable position, right? But I, I do think that 
I want to shift it from that, like AI is going to make things for me to more like we're going to use AI to make things, right? And so that's why I'm kind of interested in this. Um, all right. Well, so what I propose here, but we can break down and I'll share my screen. Um, if you have a login at youthvoices.live, you can click on the, that, the design in the center and it'll take you there. And I think you can log in. If you don't have a login, I'm, I'm going to tell you, you can use TTT, all caps, um, one, TTT2 or TTT3, you're going to have to kind of say, I'll use one or the other here quickly. Um, and then your password is TTT exclamation point. Lowercase? Um, let me double check that. No, everything's uppercase. TTT exclamation point, you say? Three Ts and an exclamation point? Yes. I, I'm sorry, I missed the username again. It's TTT1 or two? Yes. You be one, somebody else be two. <laughs> I'm, I'm one. Okay. Okay. I'm in there under my own name, so I'm great, good. Great. Mm -hmm. Super good. Um, Oops. Um, and if you just error. joined, I'll have to upgrade you, but that's okay. We'll figure this out. Um, Did something wrong? It spit me out. Okay. I may I may have a, a login. I'm going to see. You and you could probably use the Gmail account. Yeah. If you do. Sorry, it. Paul. I don't yep. know where I'm supposed to click. Click to do. Um, uh, right, right behind David. There, the whole the, anywhere in the center. Oh, okay, gotcha. Oh. Sorry, I'm checking a couple things here. Okay, ready? Sorry, I'm going to say this again because I said something wrong. If you don't have a login, it is all caps, TTT1 or TTT2, TTT3, and then your password is um, all caps, TTT123, exclamation point. Huh. I may have steered you wrong there. All right, and I'm going to share screen and kind of do the thing here, and you can sort of watch and see what we're doing and give feedback that way, if that makes sense. But I think it would be great if you could actually do it. This is designed for, you know, we're thinking, I'm thinking these need to be quick, and, and they're all based on work that we did with eighth graders and 12th graders um, in Philadelphia, in the Bronx, in New Jersey, and then Chris Sloan's kids, too. So this isn't new. We've kind of played with this with kids. Um, and I realized that I said I was going to share, and I didn't share. Sorry. <laughs> A little tired. Not present. Here we go. Window. Okay. So I'm going to, um, if you, if we need some help at some point um, as we are working, and I can go off and help you get on, we can move out of this room and, and talk that way. Uh, but right now, I hope you see this screen. And this is the document that we are imagining could be used by students. Okay, just to kind of, here's, here's one of the things we can do on, um, does everyone see the screen? Give me a thumbs up. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So one of the things we can do is, is we can we can have students or anybody um, anybody who's registered on the site hit this copy to a new draft, and then you can begin to use that. I just want to show you how this is working, but if you can uh, test it out yourself, uh, that would be great too, and give us some feedback as we go. Um, this gives me now a copy of whatever I. Right, it's the copy of the directions. So we would tell kids to do this. I want to show you what's going to happen in a second is AI is going to open up on the right side. So that's the idea here. Um, 
here's here's this mate it is we invite I'll, I'll read it and then please uh let, let me know interrupt and let's ask questions but we we invite you to use two text to image ai generators to personalize your profile like amani did above and it's not there anymore it's over here in the featured image i'll make a note like that okay like amani did above create a profile avatar picture and a profile cover image then write your first st status update on your wall. So this is like introducing young people to the site and to using AI, right? And don't stop there. Keep adding text, image, video, and GIF updates to your wall every day. Um, when you finish this activity, you will have three new updates in your wall on Youth Voices. One for each of these, a profile avatar picture, profile cover image. And then there's some examples here. I will click quickly click. Click on them, and uh, that's interesting. Oh, there we go. So these are ones that uh, actually, I forget. yeah, these are these are the ones at SLA Beaver, right? This is what the students created. So you can look at those, and then here, step by step, what you want to do. Okay. Um, I will, I'm, I'm going through this quickly. You can kind of go more slowly um, as you're going. When we get down to 1B here, right? Use AI Mojo template and DALI to create a profile image. There are kind of detailed examples, things to do. I'm going to go ahead and um, start this for you. And is anybody following me? <laughs> I'm, I'm following you, but can yeah, yeah. you just quickly tell us, Paul, where we're going? Yes. We are, so we are testing like this, this one makes a uh, set of directions. Right. Um, to give feedback on, this is what I think we could do. This is, you know, is this valuable to introduce AI this way? That kind of question. But is in terms fair? of what, yeah. what the learner's doing, they're creating a profile picture, and yeah. Oh, yes. I mean, what what are they what are they making? Yeah. So, do you see Bernard's on the screen now? Yeah, I do. Okay. So they're making this image in the background. Okay. And they're making the little icon image as well. Okay. And 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 these are these and these live on on a on a profile. They live on a yep. Yeah. Okay. So thank you so for asking. Yeah. Paul, this yeah. this move, thinking again of makerspaces. Sometimes you hear these stories of schools where kids come in and they assemble their desks, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so if if, That's use, if the use of, if the use voices as multiple assignments or exercises like this, yeah. this is the first one that sort of establishes the framing and the format of the environment that you're going to work in over the course of a period yeah. of time. Yes? Yes. And I should probably, yeah. Do, do you want to say more? So this is my, this is my background. For example, you can see here's my icon, and here's here's my bigger, longer one. Right. Okay. Um, one is so. Go ahead. I, I let me, here's what I was going to try to say. What I what I really want to demonstrate for you all because you're less, you're not familiar with it is how the AI Mojo works alongside the instructions and mm -hmm. kind of test that out, see if it's working, see if it's worth doing. Okay. So maybe I should show, slow down and show this AI Mojo on the right side. Is that worth doing? Yeah. Yeah. Is that, okay. Definitely. Good, good. Okay. So AI Mojo's here uh, and everybody, uh, the students have now have the same setup as we do here. There's a dashboard. There's a, there are templates. You, there's a set of results you can collect. There's a you can just go to the AI playground, open AI's playground. Um, I the wizard scares me. I don't know what it does. Anyway, um, you can collect notes. You can use an a, a image and then an image creator. You can also you just go directly to ChatGPT here. All of this is signed up. Anybody who logs into Youth Voices um, has a, access to all of this, and they don't have to put their own data in then. So there's all of that going on. My quick access here, I've chosen a few things to put on here. That's something we can get into. 
wasn't necessarily going to do all this introduction, but let's keep going for a second. Um, something that's very new and interesting is that students themselves can go here, create a template. They can add their own templates and kind of it's similar to making a thinking partner on now comment. So that's something down the line we can have students begin to do as well. Paul, just a question. Yes. When, when a student yes. creates a template, are they in, are they invited to provide all the framing information for that template so that the, the, the AI behaves in a certain way, the way that we write prompts for our learning partners? Is that the same? Well, thing? it would, it would be, you know, this is just the tool. We, we have to build some curriculum around, you know, sure. how to, how to do all that. But, yeah. um, it's a little more complicated than now comments because we made a decision to hide all this, but they can mm. play with all the temperature, all the top. They can oh, play with all this stuff as well. Mm -hmm. And then they write their prompt here. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. And yeah, so there are some things to learn here. Things I don't totally understand yet, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. sure. um, and, and they're learning. Yeah. But the core objective of this template is to is to inform how an image is created either so, the avatar or the banner yeah thanks for asking the good questions so we've created uh, since march or so we've created and i say we i mean i do a lot of it but i do it with teachers and students but we've created about 80 of them based on um just you know intellectual framework so, for example, um, what I have here, um, somebody would do if they were writing here on the left side, oh, they could hit say back and get a say back. They could get pointing. They could get lurking. There are different kinds of things they can do, and nice. you choose you choose the templates, right? And yeah, it's kind of a mess, but <laughs> but the search works really well. And we're going to try that now. Is that fine? Is that it good is, enough? Yeah, it is. I just want to keep keep pushing your please your, do your articulation. <laughs> if you could try to use metaphor as often as possible, mm. what what I struggle with is you're getting into the um, to the nuts and bolts of the procedure, but I don't understand what is the metaphor. What I mean are they? So now I'm starting to get. They're basically it's like pick a tutor. And you, you're, you're getting these templates that can respond to a variety of things that you might have on your desktop. That's, That's right. Okay. That's exactly right. Yes. I just need that frame yep. to no. understand what it is we're talking about. And Thank Paul, you. To, pick up, to pick up on what Bob's saying, even to make it even to make that even more reductive, would it be correct to say the way I'm on when I'm in Microsoft Word and I finish a draft and I go, I go to two choices, spell check or grammar, mm -hmm. right? I mm -hmm. mean Right. I mean, we've got you've got eighty choices, but the whole the move is I've got some text I want to apply a, a, a lens on it, that, and and get some feedback in certain ways. Word yes. gives me and, and it's gives me at this maybe three thesaurus and grammar and spelling, um, but you know I'm, I'm I'm it's the same move. Yes. Yeah, that's what we're hoping for. Yeah. Right. Um, now, so so, but some right. Um, how do I want to say this? A, a lot of it's going to be about teachers saying, "Hey, use use uh, number 16, 17, and twelve, yeah, twenty, right. right? Yeah, yeah, and exactly. and or choose one of those three, right? Sure, but yeah, and then that's what the instructions are about on the left side. It's like yeah. here, yeah. here's here's some ideas for for what you can do. Okay. I mean, and even like to, to, mm -hmm. to your point, I forget who said it earlier, like if you're going, or maybe it was, I'm thinking about the comment you got from that teacher that, you know, you don't really, you shouldn't, students should not be engaging with AI until they've written first. Right. But for example, if each of the templates that an educator is selecting have a concept that he or she wants to introduce to the students, I mean, that, goes, that sets up a lot of good pre-work, potentially good writing, so the students go to that template with some understanding of what it means to, you know, align text with habits of mind. Already those are two right. professional terms that could be written towards or discussed prior to actually using this super-powered tool mm -hmm. that's putting those things in practice. I'm, I'm just trying, 
just thanks say, for indulging me, people. I'm just doing my little backwards no, plan no, in my head here. You're, you're helping me say this clearly. I hope. Just to say, one of the Joseph Sadronsky, who's the eighth grade teacher in New Jersey, um, yeah. is is the um, she was kind of like, you know, here are three I know work, but there are so many there. Go find out, right? And they came back to her with ideas. This one worked well. I hated yeah. this one, you know. So, yeah, some some of that is possible too, perhaps, right? Sure. Yeah, and yeah. I, have I hope, a... hope we're getting close to um, makerspace with that idea too. <laughs> yes, please keep I, interrupting. Yeah, I have a clarifying question, which is sure. where did AI Mojo come from? So it's a it's a um, it's a WordPress plugin. Okay, I just looked it up. The, you know, I, the first one I put in broke the site, and so I did this one and it okay. didn't. And the guy who's doing it, he is just one guy. Um, he's really responsive to different thoughts, and so there's all that. Okay. So he and I talk to each other once a week, <laughs> and I say, "Why don't you do this?" But but yeah. So, um, thanks, Bob. Some, de some details. Uh, if I could keep off for a second, just the or keep off the um, the assignment for a second. The the chat GPT, if you. You know, it is for using 4.0 at this point. Mm -hmm. But but one of the things we can do is we can give it personalities, right? I mean, you can do that on ChatPG. I think you can give it instructions now, right? It, that's a very similar kind of thing. But some of the personalities were like, I can give it SIFT for reliability, right? You can put a... a um, a URL in here of a, a site, you have wanted to do the SIFT process, right? Um, and if you're familiar with that, but it actually does that, right? So you can, <laughs> so there are ways we can use this personality thing over here that I think are going to be interesting. So, sorry, L I'm not sorry, but let me, l let's play with the image thing. Is that okay? Sure. And then please keep interrupting me. So we've got AI Mojo open. We found the templates. We're going to search. Now, in the search, we're going to search for the word profile. And these are duplicated uh, for no good reason. Don't worry about it. So what you want to find is the prompting O2. And if you, I tell you what, you tell me what to do. And if you are doing it yourself, that's great. But we need three things. We need a subject, we need a background, and we need in the style of. Mm. Now, just to say, before I went to Jill on this, um, I, I had eight boxes, right? <laughs> Different things you can change in an image. Um, she said, uh, these are eighth graders. We have 45 minutes. Mm. You got, right? So we, we now mm. have three. So, but be as descriptive as you can. Somebody want to suggest an icon for me, or we could do it that way? What would the subject be? What's in the foreground? Or if you're doing it yourself, that's great. The Inferno. The in what? <laughs> <laughs> Hell, Paul. <laughs> you said Inferno, did you not? Yeah, I did. <laughs> okay. Um, what's the background? <laughs> Seven levels of something. <laughs> river, a river. Uh, okay, how about seven levels of a river? Oh. All right. And then in the style of, and we have some examples. Okay. Uh -huh. It's got to be Monk. Or Dante. <laughs> I spell it E D V A R D. Okay, so we're going to do. Let me go dark. All right, let's do that. Um, um, how about uh, in the style of early Monk? <laughs> Go, Terry. 
<laughs> early. Yeah, that makes it less um, dark. <laughs> <laughs> With a dash of Francis Bacon. Yep, you got it. Uh, all right. So, <laughs> what what the what the um, template was set up to do was to take those three things that I just did and to give me three reasonably well composed paragraphs of that would be a a prompt that we can use to create an image. Okay. Okay. So. Um, Yeah, so I'm going to take the second one here, right? Can you see it? I don't need to read mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm just going to copy that. And these these are the instructions are over here on the right or left. And now I'm going to Dolly, which opened up here, and I'm going to paste that, and I'm going to generate and see what it comes up with. All right, so what we've done there and what we'd need to kind of point out is that you've used AI to create a, <laughs> a prompt. Hell for, yes. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is my hey, icon. Paul, that, that's how I think of you, Paul, right there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Except you need to be a larger figure, I think. Um, wow. No, I, yeah, well, um, <laughs> all right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I, I can, I can, and and you can imagine kids um, generate <laughs> a dozen times before they find the one they love, right? Yeah, and that, that's yeah. quite okay to do. Um, and, which is an interesting process in itself, I think. But mm -hmm. I'm going to. Um, oh. I'm going to save this image as. If you put it in the library, we could still get it. But um, downloads. Okay, fair enough. Um, and I'm 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 ripping through the directions over here, kind of just remembering yeah. what to do. Okay. Um, yeah. Did somebody have a question? Thought? Yeah. It's 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 part of the objective here to. Um, Identify any places in the directions that are confusing or oh, absolutely always, yes. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. Um okay, so uh, just want to point out that um, I have my results here, right? Back here. I still have if I need to copy those at some point, they're still here until I turn my browser off. And my image is over here. So I can I can go back and forth and mess around. I can change. I can change uh, what I put in the template, for example. So lots of iterative possibilities. Um, I saved it, right? I did. Now, and I didn't think about this. Oh, I think maybe I did it in the directions, but I didn't think about it right now. I'm coming now to my wall, which every kid would have. And I'm going to go here under profile settings. And I'm going to change that guy on a bike there <laughs> to a guy. Anyway, I'm going to go to my profile avatar, which is a green box. I'm going to select the file that I just downloaded. Where is it? There he is. And I've got to crop this. There it is. I uh, can't really see it, but I'll show it to you here. There's my wall. There's my icon. All right. And then I'm going to ask, uh, we're going to say, you know, you're going to, when we're done with this, we're going to ask you to write about it. All right. Um, look, check in time. Should we stop and talk about just that first step, or do you want to think about something further here? Hey, Paul, at Let's some stop, point. Stop. Yeah. Um, Let's stop and talk. Yeah. Is yeah. there is there a place? I mean, to me, one of the one of the best questions I I want to know an answer to is mm -hmm. when a student or when a learner or when I yeah. decide I don't like it mm -hmm. or I want something different. Is there going to be 
I mean, I would want them to tell me why they did it 10 times. Because yeah. that, it's going to, those iterations are going to come, they're going to come more to terms with what it is they're kind of secretly looking for and don't know. You know, mm -hmm. the secret is to themselves as well. I would love to know that. I mean, that'd be a part of the, you know, the curriculum is to ask that question. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Um, we, we, yeah, go ahead. Well, Paul, I, I, I like, I love the direction Terry just took it. At the same time, I'm curious to see where else <coughs> this can go from the standpoint of uh, skill and practice development. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I love the process you share, but can you, can you stimulate the possibilities? Help me with my imagination to see where, like so the, the, what, what the else eighth, do we in this space? Yeah, so the eighth graders, you know, just with this experience, again, in 30 minutes, right? They, they were able to kind of like use, use both the, um, the language AI to get ideas for the images they wanted to create, um, but also use the image stuff like in, in lots of places, they went up to their social space. So it transferred really fast for them is, what, is one thing I would say. Um, I mean, so I we, can, we can also keep asking them. But, but also there, there is, as you probably know, there are books written about how to write these prompts for images, right? So they could start that journey a bit as well on their own. Yeah, go ahead. Terry, did you want to say I, I'm just thinking, you know, a, a concrete example that just occurred to me was that you could take a, a short poem like Robert Frost, The Secret Sits, mm -hmm. and there's you can ask the students to uh, create a profile around the, the secret mm -hmm. and then see where that takes them with the pictures. And then you meet and you talk about the, pic the pictures that were the, the images that were generated. Um, so I mean, part of part of poetry is that the idea of you know who is who is the poet yeah. is the poet real is the poet here the poet the real poet or is the poet here a, a an avatar or something like that? That's one way I would go with it. I don't know if that's what you were looking for or not. Oh, cool. I go ahead. Keep interrupting. I mean, keep keep talking. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of things that I want to say. Is one of them is it's especially interesting to come to these conversations week to week and see the way the, for lack of a better term, the modalities pile up, right? So you're playing with these different scenarios, and the notebook, of course, is one of them, and the mm -hmm. makerspace is another. And even within this, and just picking up on what you're saying, Terry, I mean, if there was a if there was an assignment like a kind of a kind of a desktop publishing exercise, it happens virtually, but if you're picking up on a series of poems and the goal is to illustrate the poems, but you're looking at the stanzas or the original poetry, there's the image you've created and it's, you know, there, there could even be an interface for creating sort of a flip book, but the back of the image would be the student's explanation of uh -huh. their encounter with the text and their, their attempt to sort of visualize it through the AI and the, their, and, and getting to the your point, Terry, about getting them to have some metacognition and some active thinking about how they're using the tool. And if that becomes the model for the engagement, every encounter with AI has a certain frame. There's an object or an artifact that's created through each workflow. Right. And each order of operations brings with it this body of reflection. And that becomes its own little corpus that a kid creates. Right. And that, that creates the sort of portfolio moment at the end. It certainly maps to the notebook model and it creates a sequence. But yeah, it's really nice. There's a lot to be done with this. Uh, one thing that occurs to me in this process, to your points, all of you, is uh, getting to, and, and to the thing you started with, Paul, about this teacher who's kind of commented about wanting to make sure original writing is happening in the encounter. I mean, if, if, there's a, if there's a structured moment in the workflow at every sort of step that the AI sort of frames something, that you comment on it, it's a little bit like hypothesis, right, where you're sort of commenting on the comments and so forth. But that becomes a legitimate, a little structured and personal thinking process that has its own shape. And if that becomes the routine students do when they encounter one of these 
assignments or so to speak to follow the metaphor they go to a corner of the of a makerspace and they pick up a certain type of a, of, of, of of provocation or whatever hmm. that seems like it's got some real uniformity to it in terms of a a teachable engageable set of activities that's sort of how i keep listening to how you describe these things week to week that's more, more about yeah. me than anything else that really resonates and I love that you returned to what that teacher said, because I kept wanting to go back, because I think that's kind of the crux of the matter, is that there's yeah. a reality that says writing should be this, and right. research should be this, and reading should be this. All those paradigms are being smashed right now. Mm -hmm. so, and it, it might be fine. Maybe writing isn't, and will never be the same, because it could it start to incorporate AI. So everything I write may never start with me. It may start with AI, and then I bring my, you know, sensibilities to it. And maybe that's a new definition of writing. And research has changed dramatically just through Google. And now we've got. I mean, it's, everything's changing. So the that's what's so fascinating to me is that we're actually inventing new types of new definitions of our core learning experiences. What I really love about this is that these these we are reinforcing old old writing schema to help them yeah. learn old old things and but we're also creating new writing schema right. not only within each person but also between people as they begin to discuss well how did you do that and why did you do why did you do that and the, so that is a completely different type of community a writing community then that really does <laughs> that that sends uh, things up and down my my neck mm -hmm. thinking about it a couple of things we skipped over um but the, but you can imagine the students some of the students do not skip over like <laughs> that in the stalag thing um they object they like wait can i use her you know work yeah. in my in my drawing mm -hmm. is that fair you know so Having that conversation about where these images are coming from is really worth doing at the same time as, yeah, yeah, but try Disney, see what happens. Or <laughs> <you> know, <laughs> I, 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 I really do think we can have both of those conversations at the same time, the joy of creation and then like, oh my God, you know, what is in our hands and is it fair that it's in our hands? Right? And so what are the rules? Yeah. yeah, and I mean, there's some connections to what the kids do all the time in that whole conversation where they take Snapchat uh, images that their friends send them and they remix them, which mm -hmm. is just as illegal as taking Disney Princess and using her, right? But they don't think of it the same way. So I think it's a great way to get those kinds of conversations going about intellectual property and, yeah. um, you know, what do we own and what do other people own and how should we treat it? Yeah, I noticed that there wasn't a, a, a profile for a TikTok influencer in there, Paul. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> get on the stick. <laughs> yeah. Uh... Just uh, if I could just mention the next step we take to make the, the long banner in the background. Um, yeah. And this is sure. kind of introducing. And I guess the, the meta thing I want to say here is that what we're, we're always hoping to do is learn something new about what AI can do, but also do something that you're, you know, make something real, right? So both of those things, I think. But so yeah. in this case, there's this whole notion of unbundling. And so it, the the template is built to unbundle whatever style you put in. And what unbundling does is it takes all of the details of what that style actually is and, and puts them out as like as a bunch of adjectives, right? So you don't get the artist's name in your prompt anymore. It it it, it makes a freer, more interesting kind of image to play with. Also though, <laughs> there is um this is taking if if you if you follow the directions there you scroll across a piece. Let me show this, and then we can go back to talk. Um, so if you scroll across a or click on an image or a a text a word, there is an AI image pro. This is a little different than the other plugin, 
So this one takes you to s stable diffusion. Um, what's nice about this one is it includes the ability to crop, use filters, fine tune a little bit. So again, all this is right within, and then you can download it and then upload it. So that's where those instructions are happening. I did want to mention that um, just to, to, I don't know if anybody asked it like this, but there there was an, one of the eighth graders was once telling a researcher um, on a call that she was starting to say, I used, you know, I'm a, I'm an, a watercolor painter and, <laughs> right? And she said, now I plan my stuff using AI, but then I go oh. paint it, right? So that that was like gold for me, right? That she was, she. it's not like either or at all for her. <laughs> the AI gives her ideas and then she goes and does the paintings and back and forth. So AI as camera obscura, this is a great idea because we've always used technology to help us create. Yeah, that. That mo and that moment of choosing between the ten that are there isn't much different than framing an image in a in a camera, is it? But at any rate, it's I was just so other thoughts. Chris, you got here late, but and I didn't see you were whatever. But welcome. And you you're whoops you're muted, but that's okay. Did you want? Should I leave right. you? Yeah, I'm later? just trying to catch up. Sorry. Okay. Um, we can do that sometime if you want, because your kids, I'm hoping, will jump in on this. I um, think it's a pretty good reason, but if we could uh, say some of them for why to start with images with this, although we did start with, you know, text as well. well. But, yeah. Well, I think the I, fact that... Oh. Go, go ahead, David. Uh, I mean... This, uh, the, this reminds me of, a. I think I've mentioned to you in the past, Paul, that we did a summer program with high school kids doing internships in San Francisco, and we were working with ELG, that uh, mm -hmm. open source social network, and we had sponsorship from Intel and Nokia, and we were working with phones, and the six-week project, the kids were using phones for their internships, and so the goal was to have them reflect the way you're doing, Paul. And so it all began with a profile picture and what they were going to do with it and how they talk about the privacy and so forth. But to your point about the profile, I mean, it does, it just suggests that people are customizing and personalizing their workspace. It feels, and, mm -hmm. you know, make the picture, make the banner, generate your media, be a producer, personalize your space. It feels very a third, of a piece there, as a first move, you know? There's a third step of reflection and, you know, yeah. there are some suggestions there and, but I heard some others tonight that you like better. But, you know. I, I like very much that you go in and you mess around and you personalize the space. And to Terry's point, if the, if that extra, if that production exercise includes annotation and some reflection that's captured somewhere and notes that are part of the workflow, I mean, mm -hmm. it sets up much more t targeted writing prompt exercises coming quickly afterwards. But, you know, this is going to be very multimodal and remixing. And the idea of a photo book, for example, being a culminating activity where you, po you know, you can kind of bookend a, a series of activities very nicely with these tools. Bob, but you were going to say something? Right. I'm just curious, like, what else can be done by a, a learner in the space besides decorate it? Which I'm, I'm big, I believe in everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, what else? Like, so I decorate my portfolio or my workspace. What am I going to be able to do in this place that really feels good? Yeah, I'm not. Well, I don't know. I mean, I, I know exactly what you're talking about, Bob. If, instead of a picture, can you put a GIF in? Or instead of a GIF, can you put I, in a short video? I mean... To me, starting with video would be the, <laughs> that's how I would want to start. So, yeah, I'm still. So, uh, I, yeah, I, I don't think, yeah, I mean, that that was a fine answer. I, that's not how I answered your question. <laughs> yeah, but, um, so, I, I think, and Chris Sloan, you could jump in on this too, but, you know, I think you go to the front page of, of Youth Voices and say, hey, people are building things here. People are writing things. You're going to do that too, and then you can kind of write. So I think that's that's a big part of. So that's of basically you're, you're decorating 
your your notebook or your your authoring or learning environment. Right? Yes. So you know, this is my and everything I do in on the site and actually anything I do on Nalcomen too, frankly, because we use an RSS feed to pull it in here. But anything I do ends up on this wall here. Mm. Okay. Right. So, so yeah. Can... Then you want to start thinking about okay, what do you want to do? Right. Yeah. What are your questions? What are you yeah. It's a production platform for creating inquiry, inquiry right? Yeah. yeah, that's how my students have been using it as like a collecting place for their inquiry and a place to talk about it with other students. Yeah. And that feels like, for me, that's the real long-term mm -hmm. benefit is that they've created a home for their work and they're connected to it in a more deeper, deeper way. And they have, it looks like they have access to all those tools to do their work, which is what makes it a really powerful makerspace. Yes. Um, this, by the way, was an AI image. Right? Oh, nice. Which she wow. put into her story about getting braces, right? Uh, yeah. This wasn't an AI image. So, you know, so, yeah. Just that it becomes a tool that's sitting there all the time for you to yeah. pick up yeah. is, like, I think, kind of exciting. To it is. That, that, that feels yeah. deeply important. It's, for, I mean, and I'm just kind of wondering what are all the examples of this in a, coming for students? Because it seems like everyone's going to try to figure out how to do this. Yeah. And, but yes. And, and everyone's going to pressure teachers to use particular tools and all of that, right? But yeah. so uh, there's, there's something about holding on to uh, some of the values we're, yeah. that are built into both now comment and here. Yeah. And and it is my uh, sort of pressure to the to the um, guy who created AI Mojo that you know students need to be able to the lowest level users is what he calls them uh, they need to be able to create templates too um, and that only came in a couple of weeks ago so that idea that you can create your shape of the AI for yeah. the right I think is something that. We want to keep open, is, is just to say, and 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 point out when it's not there. When I only get the choice of formal, informal, or right, then you know why am I only getting those three choices for response? No, I, that's part of the soapbox here. Any kind of uh, finishing off thoughts, or Peggy, you got on and got lost, and are you okay now? Uh, you're muted currently, but if you want to jump in, you can. There you go. Uh, yes, I'm muted. <clears throat> this went way too fast for me. I'm sorry. Yes. It's just yes. me. It's not you. No, no. So uh, I was just listening, trying to take it in, but I certainly don't have anything to contribute. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's cool, cool. Thanks for stopping by. Oh, yeah. All right. Paul, yeah, go ahead. One thing, um, <clears throat> hearing Peggy talk and, uh, you know, a lot of this stuff, I was like, I, there's 19 steps I got to go through. Oh, yeah. my God, geez. And then, but I'm realizing that it's just one foot in front of the other. <laughs> Eventually, no, I, it'll, it'll get there. But it might be better to show it on a video. You know, I don't know. Yeah, no, no, yeah, I yeah. think, I mean, I got a lot for this tonight. I'm really grateful. And one of the things I'm grateful for is now, my idea of what is possible or, you know, what they call the adjacent possible is completely changed as, as to my creative life. You know, a lot of people think, well, I'm not, I can't do photographs. I can't do art. I'm just, I can't do this. And I think the more you introduce stuff like this, the idea <laughs> about, about what is adjacently possible is much smaller leap because you're doing it. You're, you're iterating constantly. Iterating should be maybe this should be called iterations. Yeah, because uh, that's you, what you know, you're going to do. When when you were describing the poetry that you thought of to do, um, I was thinking that the way makes quote unquote work is when you can put the adjacent stuff like, oh, I tried this, I tried this, I tried that. So that's yeah. something we need to kind of think about building. But 
Yeah. Yeah. Hey, guys, I've got to I've got to jump off, but I really appreciate Great. this and call. Thank you. Great thank to you, see David. you all, and uh, it's really interesting. Let's as let's usual. close out. Thank you, guys. Thanks, well, and thanks everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Okay. Talk to you all. See ya. Thanks, see everybody. You. Chris, work that work that through sometime, and it'd be where I would love to start your students there, and I could help do it. Like I. Um, so you're talking about on the profile page. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See if you can see if you can figure that that out, and I'll be. Again, if you want me to pop in just just to meet your kids at some point and introduce this lesson, I can do that, and okay. or you can look through it yourself. <laughs> yeah. So that's what you were focusing on tonight was that um, the profile page that you linked. Yes. To it. Okay. It's linked right there under AI. Yeah, I was on the page. I was just trying to catch catch up. Yeah, and and it's cobbled together from different, you know, LRNG stuff, but mm -hmm. trying to make it simpler, but yeah. But also integrating AI throughout so that they would be able to go from creating this profile thing to using that anytime they wanted to do it. And I should have using. said that at the beginning. <laughs> using um Using AMOJO to get to um, but, 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 um, to uh, Dali, mm -hmm. but also there's another one that pops up now on the floating menu when you're editing text that takes you to stable stable diffusion. Okay. The advantage of that one is you can crop it and you can you can you know do some filters and stuff like that on the. Okay. Image. Yeah, so you were using valid. stable diffusion tonight, huh? Uh, no, it's using Dali. At, right, mm. Yeah, yeah. They're not but the instructions yeah, kind of seem to be... It's, the first half about the avatar, you use Dali. The second half about the banner in the background plays with stable diffusion more. Okay. It wouldn't matter, but but the idea is that they can then see, oh, as I'm writing something, I could go off and get an image and pull it in here. Mm -hmm. So that's the goal of that, right? Mm -hmm. They they see it as a tool then. Okay. So cool. Yeah. Sorry if I I mean I it was rushed and you got it. Anyway, we'll, yeah. we'll we'll figure it all out. Okay. Okay. Thank we start you. Wednesday or next Wednesday? When? We start Monday, but it's like a soft yeah. start. Yeah, yeah. You know, like they're, right. you know, 20 as minute classes. And as soon as you have email addresses and stuff, let me know. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay.